I can go live to Dubai now. Where I'm joined by Kai Stukenbrock, an analyst from Standard & Poor's, one of the agencies that cut the country's credit rating. Kai, thank you so much for speaking to us. So just take me through some of the reasons behind this downgrade and the risk of your rating on Egypt being cut even further. Okay, good morning. Um, the, the, the main risk behind the rating cut so far, we lowered the ratings on Egypt by one notch, is, uh, is our conviction that first of all the events that we're currently seeing and the uncertainty, um, particularly from the political sphere, are going to have an adverse impact on, uh, on Egypt's growth. Um, before this, the, the, the whole events, uh, the government was uh, aiming um, for, for growth of 6% of, of GDP. I think uh, it's fair to say that uh, growth can now be expected to, nowhere, to be nowhere near those, um, those levels. Another important factor is, uh, and it was mentioned before already, that uh, Egypt has a very high government deficit. Uh, the target was 8% and, and, and relatively high debt level as well, a 74% of GDP. With the events mm. going on at the moment, we think this is going to have an adverse impact on government revenues. But we also think, and I think it has already been announced by uh, Vice President Suleiman, that the government wants to introduce additional measures to address poverty, to, uh, to lower prices. And that is, in our opinion, going to have you know, an, an adverse impact on the budget and is going to increase the budget deficit. So, we think this is the deficit. Sorry, the budget deficit is going to be higher, and um, um, that is also putting a negative pressure on the ratings. I mean, a huge number of challenges and even dilemmas. You talk about their unemployment already a massive challenge. That's going to go up now mm. as the government loses revenue from foreign direct investment from tourism. On the other hand, those subsidies are going to result in the budget deficit going up as well. So, what should the government's priorities be right now? I mean, there's an interim government in place, but whoever takes over on a more permanent basis. I mean, what needs to happen to improve the outlook? Mm. Well, I think we're not, we're not really the ones to tell the government what to do or give advice to the government. That's not our role. But I think the, um, you know, the dominating uh, factor in all of this at the moment is, of course, the political situation. What is going to happen there? How that is going to pan out? And I think um, it's quite clear we haven't seen, we haven't seen the last in, uh, in that respect, Mr. Uh, Mubarak's announcement that he is not going to uh, stand for re-election um, in September. I don't. I mean, in, in, in my view, it doesn't seem to be uh, kind of appeasing the, the the people on the streets. And I think Mr. Obama has now also been uh, making clearer statements um, suggesting to Mr. Mubarak to go. So I think this situation is still in flow, and it will very much depend on what is the outcome, what will well the new government or the new setup um, look like. And I think that is really the, the, the paramount question at the moment. Um, and I think only once that has been well worked out or developed, um, we, we, will we be able to say more? But I think that is the key question at the moment on which the rating hinges. And that's also why we put the rating on credit watch, which basically says we think there is a 50% chance that the rating could move again downwards uh, within the next three months and potentially even more than just one notch. Kai Stukenbrock, can analyst at Stand and Pause. Uh, this is the second agency to lower Egypt's uh, ranking in as many days. Good to talk to you.